Hey, good morning, everybody. Here's where we're going to start. The idea behind the tutorial says building a full view front end and a .NET Core back end. I see lots of different tutorials with React, and I see stuff with uh, Angular. I see Vue tutorials. I see .NET Core tutorials. And I thought, you know, it'd be kind of neat to just put together a whole bunch of videos, post them onto YouTube for you guys to enjoy and girls to enjoy. And uh, basically, it's all about doing the view front end and the uh, the .NET Core back end. So today, I'm going to start out by actually kind of getting into .NET Core uh, using Visual Studio 2022, as well as explaining a bit of uh, what I do like and what I don't like. It's going to be a very basic install this morning, and uh, it'll kind of give you an idea. I recommend you follow along inside the uh, the show notes, you're going to see uh, links to, I'm going to be creating a, uh, a public GitHub repository. So if you want to just pull the code down and tinker with it, sometimes it's helpful if you've come across a problem or an error. Uh, but I would suggest that you actually go through and, and just enjoy. So uh, let's get started here. So I've basically already started up Visual Studio 2022, and uh, we're sitting in a blank screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a basic uh, API endpoint set. Okay, to, to create something here, normally when you fire up Visual Studio, you'll be presented with the uh, the screen to actually create a project in that. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually start it manually here. So we're going to say new, and we're going to say new project. And here's that screen I was talking about. Now, what we're going to be using here is the one called .NET Core, or ASP.NET Core Web API which is this solution right here. Now this is a basic solution. It has a few different configurations and we're going to use, we're going to try out two of them here this morning and I'm going to show you both of them and how they differ um, and why I like one and not the other. So we'll get started with that. So let's hit next here, that selected that. If you don't see it, you can just type in here. Uh, I can say uh, API. Okay, so what we can do is when we want to set up the actual project, we can select .NET web, uh, uh, Core Web API. Cautious, there's another one called Core Web App. That's not what we want. It's the API we're trying to select here. The big difference here is we're creating pages, possibly using Blazor, or we are using um, the old Razor. And this is what the Core Web App is for. We want the Core Web API. Big difference there. It's very easy to make a mistake there. So I'm going to call this um, Basic API. OK, so here we go. Here's our options. Now there's .NET Core 6. As you can see, I still have .NET Core 3.1. I have done application development on this machine in Core 3.1, uh, but I've done development all the way back to versions very old version 4.x uh also we have uh, .NET core 6 .NET core 7 and this fall .NET core 8 is coming out but i'm going to be selecting 6 i like to stay close to the long-term support versions i don't like to be on the bleeding edge i, I wouldn't consider .NET 7 to be bleeding edge anymore because it's been around for a little while but you know just to, to come in and rush in at with uh, version 8 I feel is a little bleeding edge until it's had about three months to solidify and become mature. We're going to select, uh, so we're going to select version six. We're going to select, and also two, just, just as a reminder, this is going to be great for years. So if you, if you end up seeing this tutorial in, let's say 2025, it's great. You know, you can use version eight. It doesn't matter. Um, but six is fairly, fairly standard. Uh, authentication type, we're going to select none. We do need to configure for HTTPS. We're not going to set up Docker at this time. We are going to be using controllers. Uh, I'll be showing you the minimal APIs in a second. Uh, so <clears throat> that's about it. So, And we're going to also enable open API support. Uh, we don't worry. Don't use top-level statements. We're not worried about that. So. Okay, there we go. So we've created a file. Uh, you'll see a little um, warning sign here under dependencies. It's just loading the dependencies from the uh, the online repos. So here we go. So starting out, this is just a very basic 
API. It uh, contains a few files here. Uh, the program is actually fired up through program.cs. Uh, an interesting thing that a lot of people don't realize is the .NET Core, all the projects, regardless of what you're selecting, start up exactly the same way. They all kind of start up like the old style .NET um, command line does. Uh, and all we're doing is we're kind of building the services we need on top of that, which is great. It, it, that's kind of how things were we're going for the longest time is still we, until we deviated and uh, Microsoft created very centric uh, project types. But we've kind of gone back to simple, simple, simple. And I, this is what I really love about .NET Core. Um, you'll notice too that under program.cs that you do two things. There's two major things that are occurring. First of all, you're creating what's called a builder. And basically this is the the place where we're actually saying, oh, we're creating a web application, okay? And uh, it creates a variable called builder for us. And then it, uh, then we add controllers, okay? And then we build it. Once it's built, we have created something called an app, okay? This is where we start adding the second part, which is our services to that app. And this is a pipeline, like it's almost like a, going down a ladder, and the order of how services are built on top of one another is important. Now, if you follow along with a lot of the basic setup that uh, Microsoft gives you out of the box, you'll stay out of a lot of trouble. I'll show you in future videos when we decide to do something, that how, how we do it and how we not do it. Okay, so basically, we have the, uh, the app, which is now a component that's been, or an object's been built for us, which is a... Uh, a running session of the builder. And here, if uh, this is saying if it, that we're working on our development environment, which we are, it's going to fire up Swagger and the Swagger UI. Swagger is a great utility. Swagger is going to allow us to see the endpoints and test the endpoints right from um, our, our uh, Visual Studio installation, or not the installation, but the actual running session. And we have HTTPS redirection. We do need that because we want to support HTTPS. We need authorization. We're not using it yet, but we will be in the future. Uh, we need to map our controllers. Remember earlier, we set up controls. We did an add controllers up here. Here's where we map them and we run the session. There's extra things we can add into this flow, but for now, this is great. The other big place you're going to see here is you're going to see an object that has been created for our basic uh, uh, viewing enjoyment, uh, weather forecast application. But the big uh, thing we're going to see here is controllers that have been built for us. Now, a controller is the endpoint that we're touching. And how we get to those controllers is through the statement right here, map controllers, OK? It's going to look into your controllers folder, and it's going to map the controllers, which we specified, because they are specified using controller base okay here we just have a basic controller we have a get and it's going to get and it's just going to give us a random you know uh, weather forecast you know a whole bunch of them so it's very interesting so let's just quickly run this make sure everything runs okay okay so we have our our weather forecast this is the swagger interface i was telling you about earlier we can actually go to that swagger interface and what i've done is i fired up a program called Postman. Now, Postman is a great little utility that you can pull off the web. I'm not going to go through a tutorial. There's lots of great tutorials on YouTube regarding pulling down Postman. And what I can do here is I can take a look here. And I can see the basic address here. So within, within here, I can actually test. So I can try it out. I can say execute. And if everything's running, and it should run just fine, you can see here we're going to get back a whole bunch of JSON data which is different weather reports, which is fantastic. That's what we want. But more importantly, this is what I want to show you here. Um, let's compress this down. Right here. Sorry, right over top of it. Now we have a web address here. We can ca capture that web address. I'm just going to capture the port because I've already done that. Okay, I'm going to jump over to Postman here. And I'm going to put that port in here. So this is exactly the same interface. Okay, there we go. So what I can do is I can do a send into my project, and it should send back 
temperature is exactly the same, same, same as what we're seeing in Swagger. And this is perfect. Now, if you try to do this from another computer next door, you can't touch local hosts from another computer. It's just, it's just, trust me, it's an impossibility. There's ways to do it, and I'll expose in future videos. But for now, it's uh, either Postman or you run in and try just use it. And you can see what's actually happening, which is kind of interesting. So for this video, because I know it's getting a little long, I'm going to kind of cut it short here. Like I said, I'm going to put this on to GitHub in the show notes. You can see where you can find this and you can take a peek at it and see what it looks like. Build your own project. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to quickly fire up another project, which is the Minimal API. And I'm going to show you what it is. It's, it's really great if you need to do something quick, quick, but it's definitely not a long term solution. This is nicely laid out, and you'll see the difference here in a second. So, Frank Thomas, I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you like the video if you find it useful. And uh, stick, stay tuned, and make sure you check out the next video when it comes to doing a minimal API. Thanks so much.